In the search for fresh creativity in filmmaking, writers and directors have pulled all sorts of stunts, but few rival the impact of suddenly turning everything to sh** unexpectedly. You can see why scriptwriters choose to go with sudden negative endings. It's definitely better than following a formulaic happily ever after. If done well, there are few things as impactful, but too often they're manipulative, artificially shocking, and the emotional gut punch just ends up ruining the entire film. I'm Simon from WhatCulture.com, and this is 10 Utterly Devastating Film Endings That Totally Came Out of Nowhere. Number 10. Marley Dies in Marley and Me At first glance, Marley and Me could be dismissed as harmless fluff. It's your typical boy and girl meets dog, dog misbehaves and everyone ends up wiser and happier. And then Marley is put to sleep forever after succumbing to the ravages of age. Sorry, what? Where the hell did that come from? Isn't this supposed to be a kid's film? It was traumatic for adults. Just imagine the effect it had on the kids expecting something similar to Beethoven or Homeward Bound. This was just cruel. Number 9. Jenny's Death in Forrest Gump Forrest Gump appears to be a fairly happy film on paper. However, there's a spanner in the works, and that spanner is called Jenny. Of all the crimes she commits during the film's run, it's the last one that's worst of all. Namely, she dumps a child on Forrest and promptly dies, which feels royally at odds with the film's tone. Granted, his mother died earlier, but she was old and it was to be expected. Jenny's death, probably from AIDS, just a massive twist of the knife. In a film this sweet, you half expected them to end up happy and together when she finally sorted herself out. But no, she ends up in the great beyond and Forrest ends up heartbroken. Lovely. Just lovely. Number 8. Everyone ruined their lives in Magic Mike Magic Mike looks a lot like it's probably going to be a comedy. And for the most part, it's appropriately ridiculous with a light-hearted plot akin to a modern day, but seedier, dirty dancing. You probably think it's going to take the normal route. Guy learns ropes, guy gets good, guy gets cocky, guy suffers a stumble, guy finds redemption. It certainly starts that way, then the stumble comes, and what stumble it is. Adam gets into drugs, ends up owing £10,000 to a dealer, and Tatum's Mike has to use his life savings to bail him out. This leaves Mike extremely depressed, as it would, as he leaves the stripping business penniless and unable to follow through on any of his dreams he had for himself. Basically, nobody wins and everybody loses. Number 7. Gunning down your family in the mist When the mist's little store community goes to hell and they start killing each other to appease the monsters outside, Thomas Jane, his adorable kid and some others decide to make a break for it rather than stay with the increasingly extreme store survivors. This looks like a bad idea from the outset, but the way it turns to tragedy is stunning. Thinking they're about to be killed by a giant monster coming towards them, Jane guns down the car's occupants, including his son, to save them from the horror. However, it turns out the noise was the army coming to save them. Jane weeps in his car, as you would, as we the audience reel from being savagely gut punched by a film. As rug pulls go, it's just utterly bleak, but amazingly effective. Number 6. They all die anyway in Dawn of the Dead Zack Schneider's 2004 remake nailed the sense of zombie carnage in the opener before settling down to the consumerist satire that punctuated the main film. Naturally, because this is a horror, the survivors decided to leave their mall safe haven despite all logic telling them otherwise. Again, it's a bad idea. But then, when they actually get to the boats, we thought perhaps they might actually get away with their harebrained scheme. Hell, we would have even accepted an ambiguous ending. But no, the film decided to slap us about the head with an ill-fated voyage leading to a zombie swarming. Okay, so it isn't confirmed that they died, but it certainly looks that way. And besides, whoever survives a zombie swarming? Nobody. Number 5. Everyone gets arrested in Monty Python and the Holy Grail Who knows what we should have expected from the Python lads, and knowing their surreal humour, absolutely anything was on the table. But if you had told audiences at the film's start that King Arthur and his round table would be rounded up in paddy wagons at the end, they'd have called you a liar. After all the iconic comedy sketches, we come to the climatic battle at Castle, Arr! and just as Arthur goes to attack it, the police bundle them and any concrete resolution into a van. It's just so ridiculous that it provocatively ruins everything. Almost like that was the intention all along, and we all got suckered in. If that is the case, well done, lads. Well done. Number 4. XXXX gets shot in layer cake. The cinematic equivalent of a kick in the crotch, layer cake's notorious ending is fast turning into the Citizen Kane of where the hell did that come from endings? After Daniel Craig's nameless character has managed to negotiate the criminal underworld, he has Sienna Miller on his arm and things are looking up. And then just as he's in the midst of a smug speech, he's shot by Miller's boyfriend on the steps of a country club. It's quite clever. At least it is kind of entertaining to see the guy who plays Q kill James Bond. Lovely bit of trivia there. 
when you're next down the pub. Number three, the apocalypse and aliens in Knowing. Knowing's story isn't a bad one, centering around a mulleted Nicolas Cage being able to track disasters using mathematics. And what follows is something akin to Final Destination, but on an epic scale. But come the ending, it goes utterly balls out bananas. We thought all along that Cage might prevent these disasters, but it turns out that Earth's gonna die anyway very soon. And not only that, but it also turns out that the creepy blokes monitoring the Cage household were aliens intent on nicking his son and the only other child in the plot to start human life again on a trippy planet. The shift in tone alone is enough to leave your head spinning. And overall, jeez, what a crazy film. Number two, everything's a lie in The Descent. The Descent is all pretty brutal with blood, gore, psychological terror, and oppressive darkness, making for a terrifying scenario you wish you could escape from. It also helped that we had some pretty compelling protagonists who you genuinely cared about. And it looked as if Marshall was gonna let them live. Main character Sarah also appeared to have made it out of the hellhole, driving away to safety. But then comes the ridiculously jumpy moment where Spectre ambushes her car. Then, the reveal. It turns out she never got out, but was hallucinating in a cave with the creatures still skulking about. Talk about a downer. Number one, suddenly 9-11 in Remember Me. The twist here would just be heroically silly if it wasn't in such bad taste. At first glance, Remember Me looks as if it's just another Robert Pattinson romantic drama vehicle, and it does go that way for a long while with the same obstacles and romantic redemption. You know how it goes. But then, it gets absurd. We learn that it's September the 11th, 2001, and that Tyler is waiting in his father's office in the World Trade Center's North Tower, where he is killed. It's just so completely out of nowhere, there's not even a twist. It's just a slap in the face. And frankly, it's pretty offensive. Know of any other downer endings that came out of nowhere? Tell us in the comments below, and then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can even find What Culture on Twitter at What Culture or me at SimonMiller316. I am Simon from What Culture, and I will be chatting to you again soon.